The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Let's get into this main event, fellas. In the light heavyweight division, we had champion Alex Pereira defeating Jamal Hill by KO in the first round. Admire had Pierre and me and Steve had Jamal Hill. So in the uh, beginning of this round and for most of that first round, both of the guys were kind of just trying to find their range and kind of strike from the outside. Not a whole lot going on. And then towards the end of the round, Hill kicked Pierre in the nuts. And Pierre told, uh, who was it? Is it Herb Dean? He backed mm-hmm. Herb Dean off, said, I'm still good. Went in there. I think he caught Hill with an uppercut, dropped him, finished him off a grounded pound. After he knocked him out, he like just pointed at him like, see, I told y'all, here's my work. And it was over. And Pierre made it look easy and was able to defend that light heavyweight championship. What were your thoughts on this one, Admire? Yeah, so I downloaded the video of this one so I could watch it in slow motion to see exactly what happened. So Hill threw a left and Alex threw a right at the same time. And Hill was looking at Alex's right. Mm-hmm. And he came in with that left. It just he never saw it coming. Uh hard punch, man. Um, I think they both look good throughout the filling out process. Um, you know, but Alex, yeah, he's so fast that I had to download it so I could run it in slow motion and just really see what happens because he threw that left so quick. Um you know hats off to him i hope you know to see more jamal hill you know he went through a lot of things getting the belt after relinquish it you know comes back and gets beat so i'm excited to see where they both go from here you know i'm sure after you know we get through you guys uh we'll talk about what's next for them because i have some predictions about what's next steve what were your thoughts on this fight yeah man which most of these Fighters at Fart Piero, they need to watch that lead hook, man. That shovel, shovel hook, man. They don't see it coming. It's like he'll get you bouncing around. And then when you think he's just bouncing and planning back, he'll come forward. And like you said, he'll didn't see it coming. And they 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 aren't lying. That punch makes the his opponent's eyes roll back. And if you saw on the replay, his eyes roll back. And uh, and you know what? I almost almost thought it was a, a reciprocating thing, but I thought he was about to get knocked out like Johnny Walker, the way his body was going. But it wasn't <laughs> quite like that. But I was like, oh, my goodness. And it, it was pretty devastating as far as for Jamal. I think his one of his first knockouts. Um, I think he'll come back and recover. Uh, you can maybe say that may have been bring rust from being not being active. Um, but like Admar said, I, I would like to see what the future is for Hill. Cause I think he's still a good competitor. Uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, Pierre keeps proving me wrong. I mean, I pick Hill, but I knew Pierre – had to knock out power to win. It wasn't a confident pick of Hill. It was more so sort of like uh, coming from like a fan perspective and a fanboy perspective, thinking Hill might put a good comeback story after that Achilles injury. But I kind of had a gut feeling that Pierre would win. But the way he's been doing it, when up a division, he's still knocking light heavyweights out. So I guess the sky's the limit for Pierre, but we still hadn't really seen them tested on the ground. So I think that's still a question that needs to be answered as far as Piera goes, but I'm going to kick it back to you. Am I, you say you have some ideas what happens next? Yeah. Um, so I think Piera is now the UFC's golden boy with, you know, for the higher weight classes with John Jones out and stuff like that. I think the UFC is going to do everything they can to protect him. And I think they're going to keep feeding him stand-up fighters. Um, I think Jerry is probably going to get that fight, even though I 
they just fought. I don't really want to see it. Um, but if you look through the next guys, you have, you know, Magomed Ankalov that, you know, is ranked number two. I don't think they want to put him against Alex Pierre. He's going to take Alex down and it's going to become a ground fight. Even uh, Jan Blackhouse, it's he took Alex to a split decision and there was a lot of ground fighting in that. And that's why he kind of got some of the judges' scorecards. Everybody else, you know, Alexander Rakic that just fought on the card is a stand-up guy. I think they're going to keep throwing those type of stand-up guys at Alex. They're, they're going to keep him away from wrestlers. The only other thing I can see other than Jerry is if they move Alex back down to middleweight and let him hold two belts at once. Um, that's a lot to unpack with that. I mean, I don't think it's set in stone, but you'd have to wait for DDP and Adesanya to happen, right? If he were to go back down to middleweight. And yeah, and I thought I heard that DDP had a fight set up, but I guess he doesn't. Against who? I for I thought he had a fight set up, but maybe he doesn't. And, I mean, Alex is coming off pretty untouched out of that fight. Put Alex against DDP. And y'all are forgetting his post-fight. He said he's trying to go up to heavyweight. I was just going to bring that up, Steve, that Am I didn't uh, mention. Yeah, he said he wants to turn back around and go at 301 and fight at heavyweight, too. So yeah, that plays in the, uh, into the story, too, Admire. I don't think. I, I don't think he fares well at heavyweight. A lot of those guys are wrestling heavy. Um, mm, I think are they though? He might pull it off with Aspinall. Yeah. If he get times it, the right person. And... You got Curtis Blaze, who's a wrestler. And it may be some Europeans that I'm not thinking about, but besides Alexander Blaze, Volkov, Sir, 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 Sir Volkov is a stand up dude. Pavlovich is a knockout guy. Oh, they they got power, but I, they're both heavy wrestlers. They they have wrestling. I haven't seen Volkov really wrestle like that. Neither uh, Pavlovich either. I'm um, thinking about it. Um, Derek Lewis, he doesn't he doesn't wrestle. Uh, Biggie Boy, he doesn't wrestle. If you want to, I don't know if you throw against a top four or five guy, but if he wants to do a fun fight next month, if he didn't take any damage, why not? I don't know, man. Uh, it just, you know, going from middleweight to heavyweight, we've seen it. You know, I think Anthony Rumble Johnson did that, you know, but I don't know, man. If some, if one of these heavyweights gets a hold of Alex, even if they're not a wrestler, I think they would be able to take him down just because of, you know, the size, the weight, and everything. I'm not saying I don't want to see it. You know, I think in my mind, if it happens, if he does go to heavyweight, Throw him straight in against Tom Aspinall. I mean, like like Steve said, though, I mean, I wouldn't count Pierre out of it. That'd be stupid of sacrificing your contender like that if Pierre does win. I don't even know if I like him going down the middleweight. I say have DDP and Adesanya fight it out. Then, I mean, Pierre, you just fought. You could wait for a little bit. Have the winner come up to him. Why not do it that way instead of making him cut? So I heard it was a hard cut, uh, weight cut for him going down the middleweight. Or he could just get crazy, go up to heavyweight, win the belt, then drop to middleweight, be a, well, a three. Well, three hold weight. up now, man. We, we still forget that John Jones is the champion up there. He's not, <laughs> he's, he's not beating John Jones. I, I'll go out and say that. And, and that's where I think this light, this heavyweight chance. I, I, that's why I'm not taking it serious what Pierre is saying unless he's thinking about fighting Tom Aspinall. <laughs> I think he gets destroyed by John Jones. Yeah. John Jones, is, you know, he's not Max Holloway. He's not going to go out there and say, let's throw down. John Jones is going to do what he does. Right. But I mean, Aspinall is the interim champ. So if, say, Pierre goes up, beats Aspinall, becomes interim champ at heavyweight, drops back down to middleweight. Picks up a belt there. He, he could technically do it. Could, but I think it's improbable. I mean, just to do, just to hold all three belts in general, that would be impressive. So if he eventually got the heavyweight belt, 
that would be pretty impressive to see. I mean, I, I just don't see the reward in Aspinall defending the interim title. I don't see what he gets out of that. I think he should wait, see what happens with Jones. I'm thinking Jones will probably be back for New York in November. Hopefully he gets that legal situation out of the way. I don't even know if anything happened to him legally. It's just a bad look in the public eye. Yeah, you know, I don't think anything happened. And yeah, and there's no, there's no reward for Aspinall to take a Piera fight yeah. none whatsoever. But I mean, I think Piera, like I said, I think that's one of the new UFC poster boys. I mean, they could just model them more so like an Anderson Silva type because uh, it's a language barrier, obviously, but they could just let his fighting speak for itself and market them that way. So we'll see how they push him after this one. Thank you for checking out this Haymaker Combat Sports segment. This full episode could be found on the Haymaker Combat Sports YouTube page and in audio form on all major podcast platforms. Until next time, peace.